Hi, Paul here from the Health Team Trial Store. Uh, we're just going to take a look at the new Mecha Techno. Um, thank God, another electric trials bike on the market. We only had EM for a while there and promises from Gas Gas and Yamaha. But it looks like we've got a fantastic 60 kilo electric trials bike just been released. We'll start at the front, work our way around it. Um, there's been plenty said about some stuff. I'm going to dig a bit deeper. Um, so starting with the front end, a Morad Rims Dunlop 803 GP front tyre, um, Morad Hub Brake Tech, the latest Evo 4 Brake Tech caliper, the best we can get, um, really good brake lines, reinforced um, through the centre section there, up to the latest Brake Tech master cylinder, um, anodised red caps and perches, really nice, Brake Tech long brake lever. Um, uh, Magura throttle, pretty standard on lots of electric bikes. Um, this is nothing out of the ordinary, easy to maintain, easy to adjust. S3 handlebars, S3 um, handlebar pad. Um, clutch side, we're same, we've got brake tech, clutch master cylinder. Um, you can see in the map switch here, turn the bike on, goes automatically to the softest green map. Um, you can tap on that button to blue the next one up or red the most aggressive map. Uh, I believe now there's four maps. This one's only got three. This was one of the first bikes. Leonelli kill switch, um, standard fitment on most trials bikes. And then here we're looking at the new M4 trials forks. Uh, a really lightweight but complex fork. I mean, a shower weighs 5.2 kilos, a textile's 5.1, a tech aluminium is 4.5 and these are 3.9 kilos without sacrificing any adjustability um, very nice 39 mil just like a tech fork is interesting fork seal arrangement um, it doesn't have a traditional rubber dust cap it's got these uh, screw-in retainers so um, using a pin spanner like this you, know, you just put the pin in each side of the retaining ring and then just give it a quick break of the thread, uh, spin it off and you can see the uh, fork seal underneath. Fork seal is a 39 mil seal. Same size as a tech fork seal. Uh, you can see it sitting in there. There's a tech fork seal for comparison. Standard one and an SKF one. Um, reverse to put the seal retainer back in. Just give that a quick spin and a nip up with the pin spanner. On the lower part of the fork leg is the rebound adjuster. A bit hidden underneath, but similar to a tech. Um, so right at the bottom there, you can see a three mil Allen, that little red adjuster deep inside the bottom of the leg there, protected, so it's not gonna get damaged. But that's the rebound adjusting. And then the compression adjusting is on the top right hand side of the fork here. You can see I'm just taking it out with another pin spanner. Um, but that red adjuster in the middle does your compression adjusting. Um, this unit comes out, it's in five weight four coil, similar to most other trials bikes. Um, through the middle there, um, there's a, a valve that you can screw in and out, so that changes the oil flow through that passage. There's also compression and rebound shims um, on either side of the stack there pretty easy one to adjust it's just sticking a three mil hex down the middle there wind that in and out and that changes that oil flow through that passage um, nicely uh, put together on the left hand leg is the preload adjuster same deal comes out with a pin spanner uh, everything's nicely made nicely anodized seems like all the threads are good everything's um, quality with these m4 forks you can see I've got the preload adjuster wound all the way off there in its shortest position. Um, but as you wind in the um, preload adjuster here, which is an easily one with a T-handled X again, um, that lengthens the preload unit and places tension on the spring. You can see that's in its extended position there. So there's quite a range to add preload to the spring. If we dig deep in here and pull the spring out, um, I've got it sitting here next to a tech spring. Exactly the same diameter and same length as the tech aluminium forks. So there's already a number of choices to use with linear and um, progressively wound springs for various weights there. At the front of the bike there, that's the 
um, heat sink for the heat control for the um, electronics controller. Um, that's the battery cover. Battery cover comes off easily with one little screw held, holding it at the front to reveal the battery and battery connections. Um, to charge the battery, you just undo this little cap in the middle here, and there's a uh, nice mil spec plug that goes straight on. You can see the uh, terminal is marked with a white dot and another white dot on the plug, so it's easy to line up. Quickly buzz that on, and you can start charging the bike. When the bike's charging, these LEDs are flashing and will give you an indication as to where the battery's at. The battery charger also has indicator lights starting red and green to flashing green to fully green when the battery's fully charged. Um, you'll see on the battery here, it's fused, uh, covered fuse there. With the cover off, there's see, the fuse exposed. Uh, and then the battery slides in and out of these channels in the frame and the battery's held in by two screws on each side. Comes in and out really easily and really quickly. Um, nicely engineered piece there for the battery. You can see the channels exposed here. Uh, battery test indicator on the top of the battery. Um, all the warnings down the front of the battery and the battery weighs on its own 11.25 kilos. There's the little warning indicators that give you a readout for what's going on on the, on the battery easily tested. Um, the dashboard has a little hidden button on the right hand side, you can turn that on and off um, and that displays the temperature, the voltage, the state of charge. There's the bespoke motor and the controller uh, which is rubber mounted um, just in front of the, just behind the heatsink there. There's a little JST plug which is for plugging into the computer uh, for reprogramming. Uh, the side panels there are made from 7075 T6 alloy. Uh, the side plate on the engine there with the cover off exposes the um, crank sensor on the electric motor. Um, you can see all the fittings there. Uh, the combined frame technology of different materials like the chrome molly top frame with the alloy side frame. Here showing you how easy it is to get the sub frame off. Um, that's just three screws each side. Um, but it slots in really nicely over the Olin's rear shock and held in pretty easily by some M6 screws. Um, going back to the top of the frame here, you can see the mount um, just above the battery also is the um, top connection for the Olin's rear shock. And you can see the Olin's here, it's a um, TTX model 22. Uh, it's adjustable with high speed compression adjustment, low speed compression adjustment, which is the blue screw, um, external reservoir, many different springs available, and also down at the bottom of the shock there's a rebound adjuster. So a nice complicated uh, shock to give you plenty of things to play with and to get your setup exactly right the way you want it. Um, you can see in the uh, foreground there, uh, brake tech rear master cylinder. This is the same as used on a Gas Gas Racing and GP and also a Beta Evo. Um, the clutch side case here, very similar to a Gas Gas with the fitting in the sort of two o'clock position. With the cover off, you can see the thrust bearing and bush. Um, and the clutch itself is the same style of diaphragm clutches found on Gas Gas TRS, Vertigo, Electric Motion, um, and now Sherco as well. Um, same five plates, three frictions, uh, two steels. Um, the rear brake pedal has a nice eccentric adjuster there for brake lever position. Um, S3 hard rock pegs, really nice fixtures on all the frame. Typical um, iris gold chain, um, gas gas style front sprocket, same spline size. So many different um, sizes available. Dunlop 803 GPT. GP tyres and nice lightweight Morad rim with the cutouts between the spokes. Um, so that's the tubeless rear rim. Galfa 150mm FIM style rear brake disc. They haven't skimped on anything on this bike. It's very, very nicely engineered. Anyway, we hope you like this quick overview of the new Mecha Techno Dragonfly electric trials bike. We're suitably impressed with the technology and incredible weight saving, like 60 kilograms is a real game changer, I think. 
and so good to see the bike that we've looked at for the last couple of years at a few world championship rounds finally make it into production. Please chuck us a like and subscribe and we'll be back real soon with more from the Hell Team Trials Workshop.